In this video, we're going to take a look at how to find the volume of a solid with known cross-sections. So what we want to look at now is instead of taking a rectangle or an odd shaped figure and rotating it about an axis, we already have a solid three dimensional figure and we know how to find the cross section. So that means if I had a figure and I could cut it down the middle that the cross section would be say a square or a rectangle or a half circle or a circle. And so when we did this and we were rotating about the axis, we used this function. And typically we would have this pi on the outside instead of the inside, but I wanted to point out to you that this is really just pi r squared. It's the formula for the area of a circle. So if we now are going to shift gears and no longer exclusively use a circle, we're now going to be able to replace the a of x in the figure with whatever the formula is. So our more general formula now for volume is going to be the integral from a to b of a of x dx. And the a of x will just be replaced by say the formula for the area of a square or the formula for the area of a rectangle or a trapezoid. So whatever the cross sections are, that's going to go right here to find the area. And then of course, integrating it, we'll find the accumulated air area or volume. Let's start with a fairly straightforward example. We want to find the volume of the solid bounded by the functions f of x equals x plus two and g of x equals x squared with cross sections that are squares perpendicular to the x-axis. So before we look at what the picture might look like, keep in mind that we're dealing with squares. So when you see something like this, you should in your mind be thinking that the formula that we're going to use is the formula for the area of a square, which is to take the side of the square and square it. Perpendicular to the x-axis just tells us that we're going to be um, integrating with respect to x. So the first thing, of course, I would always do is to graph my functions so I can see what we're dealing with. Now, this might mess with your head a little bit because you need to understand exactly what is happening. And what is happening here is we have many, many, many squares. So this is the base of the figure that I have drawn, but coming off of the page at you, I have squares, just a whole lot of squares. And again, I could draw as many of them as I wanted, but that's what that figure is going to look like. So I know I'm no artist here, but you get the idea that essentially this line is the base of a square and that square is standing straight up. So really what I need is I need to know based on the fact that I'm using this function of s squared, the side squared, I need to know how am I going to find the side of each of those squares that's standing straight up. Well, let's think about what we know. This top function is the function x plus 2 and the bottom function is the function x squared. So y equals x plus 2 and y equals x squared. So if I wanted to find the distance between those two lines, again, I'm going to use that same concept that we've been working with, which is to find the side of the square and the side of the square would be the first function or the top function minus the bottom function. So that is the side of my square, which in this case I can just rewrite as negative x squared plus x plus two. So that's the side of the square. So now I'm going to go to actually finding the volume of this figure. And the volume of the figure, remember we said we were going to go from a to b of a of x dx. So in this case, we would be going from the intersections of the two 
And again, have we found the intersections yet? No, we haven't, so I have to find x plus 2 is equal to x squared, so 0 equals x squared minus x minus 2, so 0 is equal to x minus 2, x plus 1, which means x is equal to 2 and to negative 1, and I can certainly verify that looking at the picture, negative 1 and positive 2. So when I integrate, I'm going to integrate from negative 1 to positive 2. And then again, I'm using the area of a square. And the area of a square is just the length of the side squared. So the length of a side is negative x squared uh, plus x plus 2 squared dx. And again, that's just all math now. So from here, again, I could square everything out, but I'm going to take the easy way out and basically plug this into my calculator to find the solution. And when I do that, I end up with about 8.1 cubic units. So again, yes, I could have multiplied everything out, integrated everything, used the fundamental theorem of calculus to plug in 2 and negative 1, but again, what I'm most concerned about in this section is making sure that you understand how to set it up. Here's a question that should look somewhat familiar, and I would really like you to press pause and try this question on your own before I go through it with you, so please do so now. So hopefully you did go ahead and press pause. The reason that it should look familiar is, of course, because we're using the exact same functions as before. And the only difference is they didn't explicitly tell me what the shape of the figure was, um, but they did tell me that I would be dealing with a height of 2. And so again, if we use that same idea from last time, these are the lengths of the figure, and now it just has the same height of 2 each time. So it doesn't matter how long the base is, the height is 2. And so hopefully you can reason through that we're dealing with rectangles here. Now, just as I did before, I still need the length of the side. The length of the side, just as it was last time, is the top figure minus the bottom figure. So again, I'm going to use negative x squared plus x plus 2, just as I did in my last example. The difference here is that I am finding, because I'm dealing with cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis with a height of 2, my a of x, instead of being a square, is now a rectangle, so it's length times width, or because I've already called this side s, s times height. Now, what's the height? Well, the height is 2. So, to find the volume, I'm going to integrate. Again, I'm not going to find those limits of integration again because we did that last time. And last time we said that was negative 1 to 2. And I'm going to take the length of the side, negative x squared plus x plus 2, times the height, which is 2, which was given to me in the question, dx. So again, I should probably do a little bit of simplification, so I'm going to go ahead and actually, because it's easier than distributing, I'm going to put the 2 on the outside, and I'm going to integrate the negative x squared plus x plus 2 dx, and then again, I'm more concerned that you're able to set this up than I am seeing the integration for this particular part of the section. So from here, I'm just going to use my calculator and determine that my volume is 9 cubic units. Here's another question for us to try, and this one is a bit of a challenge. Just because I'm dealing with a base that is a circle, and then my cross sections are semicircles, and so it's a big question of when do I divide by 2, when do I not divide by 2, etc. So if you're up for a challenge, press pause, try this question on your own. If you're not up for a challenge, then join me. Let's go through this together. So 
first thing I would do is, of course, draw my picture because I need to be able to visualize what's going on. And if I have a base bounded by this circle and the uh, cross sections are semicircles, what that means is every time I draw a line that is perpendicular to the x axis, which is what I have, then I'm going to just have a semicircle on top of it. So you can see what this shape would end up being if I continued that and I continued drawing all of the semicircles, it would look like half of a basketball. So if you can try to visualize that in your head with the part of the basketball that I've cut as the base that is a circle and then the part that is the dome as all of my little semicircles that would be drawn. So. Again, one thing that is a good idea to do whenever you're doing a question like this is to always try to figure out what's going to be that formula. What's the A of X formula for a semicircle? Well, we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, but the area of a half circle is one half pi r squared. So that's going to be my A of X formula. However, just as I did before, I need to know the length of the base. Now before when I found the length of the base I took the top function minus the bottom function but I just have the one function here. So let's think of it this way. If I have x squared plus y squared is equal to 9 and I want to write it in terms of y, I would have y squared equals 9 minus x squared and then I would have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. So that's sort of the length of my base, but really it's not because there are two functions. There's the positive 9 minus x squared, which would give me the top of the circle, right? And then the bottom, which would give me the bottom of the circle. Well, what I'm going to do to kind of get around the, the trickiness of this question is I'm going to take 2 times the 9 minus x squared. So again, why did I do that? Because 9 minus x squared, let me find a color I haven't used. Let's just simplify here. 9 minus x squared is going to give me this part, right? So the length of the base is that and then another equivalent segment. And the length of the base in this case is the diameter of the circle. Now, I'm going to find the volume, and the volume is found by taking the limits of integration, and again, I don't really have to do any work for the limits of integration. I know that the radius of a circle um, in this format is the square root of 9, which is 3, and so um, I'm going to go from negative 3 to positive 3. Again, negative 3 to positive 3. So from negative 3 to positive 3. And then again, I'm using 1 half pi r squared. Now, what I have found here represents the diameter of the circle. I need the radius of the circle, so now I'm going to take that divided by 2. So it's just the square root of 9 minus x squared is the radius. So that's what I'm going to plug in. So volume is equal to negative 3 integration, ugh, let me try again. Volume is equal to the integration from negative 3 to positive 3 of 1 half times pi times the square root of 9 minus x squared squared dx. So again, the 1 half really can come to the outside. And I've got actually the 1 half and the pi. So I'm integrating from negative 3 to 3 of 9 minus x squared, the square root of that squared. So this is just 9 minus x squared dx. So again, I've got 1 half pi, and then 9 becomes 9x, and x squared becomes x cubed over 3. And I just forgot that I haven't been doing all of the extra work on this. Um, so really I could have at some point just stopped and said, okay, let's let the calculator do the work. So at the some point I would have stopped would have been right here. So what I've begun to do, 
I'm not asking you to do for this particular question just for the sake of not having another 30 minute video for this section. Um, and so the volume is approximately equal to 56.54 cubic units. Coming up next, we are going to take a look at finding the volume using the shell method.